Now what is up my fellow prod coders, welcome to this video and today we will talk about how to make our session implementation work with browsers. Uh, now before we have been using Postman to kind of uh, make sure that our session implementation works with our cookies and so on, um, but browsers or well, like a browser is very different from Postman because Postman just lets you do whatever you want. It's just a developer tool after all. Um, but a browser has like a lot of security standards that it enforces and we need to do some additional setup and work to uh, yeah, make our application run with a browser. And I just wanted to show you how that works. So for one, um, we need to set up like on our server a course policy. So course stands for cross origin resource sharing. And if you don't know what it is, uh, I highly encourage you to uh, like check out this document or this article here on MDM Web Docs. It's really amazing. It pretty much explains everything. And what it basically says is that uh, the server um, whitelists uh, from which URLs or from which origins it accepts uh, AJAX calls. And if your origin is not in the AJAX call, then the browser will just block it because it assumes that, you know, the code that is running in the browser is kind of malicious because it trusts the server. And if the service says, hey, I don't know who this, who this guy is, I don't know what origin that guy has, I'm just going to block it. So uh, we need to implement a chorus policy. And this is actually really simple because there's a package from Express, uh, which is called course. And we're going to use that. So um, let's go back to our code and let's install this package. So we say npm install course. And um, what we are going to use a middleware. So this is a middleware. So that's why I'm just going to create a course.js file. And inside of this file, I'm going to import this package we just created. Okay. And now we want to create some options. So let's just create course options equals. So this is basically the setting, like our course policy. And if we scroll down here a little bit, like it explains pretty much everything. But what I typically tend to use is first of all, this thing. Um, so the browser in certain cases makes so-called pre-flight requests or uh, options uh, request. So that means if you are trying to make a specific type of request or you have some custom headers, it's going to send a request with the HTTP verb option to the server and ask the server, hey man, like, do you even allow this HTTP verb with this route? And um, then the server is supposed to return yes or no. And if, he re if it returns yes, so status code 200 or 204, then the browser will make the actual request. Uh, but sometimes this creates problems with legacy browsers. That's why it makes sense that the status code for this options request on our server, let's set it to 200 instead of 204. Okay. And then apart from that, yeah, here we already have what we need. So here it basically says, if you want to allow like dynamic origins, or if you only want to allow requests from certain origins, then use this code. So we can just take all of that stuff and uh, just paste it in here. And um, yeah, let's just format it real quick. And we need to create a whitelist. So basically what we're saying here is um, if like the request comes from one of these origins, let's make HTTPS here. Uh, then we're going to allow it. If not, then we're going to block it. And what I typically do here, it's probably not that important because the list is quite small, but I typically use a set here uh, because it's just faster. Um, now with two elements, it will probably not make much of a difference, but if you have more, then it's going to be um, much faster with a constant lookup time. So I'm just going to say if whitelist.has uh, origin, then I'm going to allow it. And otherwise I'm going to throw an error. 
And uh, if you're wondering what this set is, like it's basically a hash set. So I will not go into like details on how this works, um, but it's basically an efficient way to check if something is in a, in a set or in a list, so to say. Um, yeah, and that is pretty much our uh, options. Now what we can do is we can say module.exports and we can say course, course options. So what this does is uh, we're using this course package we just installed. We're passing it our options and this thing is actually going to return a function. So this, this call, like this course, uh, course options uh, call, will return like a function with request response next, you know, like a classical middleware. And in here, the request will be allowed or blocked. This is basically what this, uh, yeah, what this package does. So going back to our code, we can just go to our index.js file. We can import our middleware. So I'm just going to call it a course middleware to not, so that people are not confused with, uh, you know, uh, the course package and our own middleware, which we already configured. And um, now I'm going to put the logic in here or like before we plug in our router. So we say set up course logic. And uh, then we can do two things. We can say uh, app.use course middleware. And remember, this is a function. And we can also say app.options uh, star course middleware. Okay, so this options, uh, if you're wondering like what that is, this is what I just mentioned before. So sometimes if you make specific types of requests uh, with specific headers, then the browser is going to ask like the server, hey, do you allow this request? And only if the server says yes, it's going to actually do the request. And uh, what we say here is um, we allow all option requests uh, as long as they are from the whitelisted domain. So if you come from any other domain, like your option request will be blocked. But uh, if like you are whitelisted as a domain, then like we allow it. So we can say uh, npm run dev. All right, so let's open Postman. And um, I will go to cookies, delete this. And I will go to headers. And I, as you can see, I do not send the origin header along at the moment. And if I uh, hit send, then you see that you do not get an unauthenticated error, but you do get like this error uh, not allowed by course. And this is actually very good. So that means if someone comes from a malicious site called, I don't know, myevilwebsite.com and uh, basically copies our webs, like makes their malicious websites look exactly as our website to kind of trick the customer into thinking that, you know, he's on the original website, then this Ajax call, like it will just not work. Okay, so that's pretty good. And by the way, if I activate like the origin, then you, then you can see, oh, I have uh, 204 no content. So then it is successful. And another interesting fact, if I put in a user with uh, that doesn't exist, then I get user not found. So that's exactly the behavior we want. Yeah, so that's like um, one important, or basically like the first step on making this work with a browser. Now there are a couple of other caveats we need to take into account, but since we have almost reached 10 minutes, I would say, let's just stop the video here um, and let's continue in the next one. So uh, thank you very much for watching. Um, please make sure to give the video a thumbs up. And uh, also, please don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so. And by the way, I've set up a mailing list where if you guys are interested, can decide what we are going to cover next on the channel. So every once in a while, I send an email along and then you guys can vote. So if you're interested in that, if you want to have a say in what we do next year, you can also sign up for this. Again, thank you very much for watching and take care.